What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Let's Play here on YouTube.com slash KindOfFunnyGames. I'm Greg, that's Colin, and Colin, yes. we're in the computer room, which means we're playing one of these PC games. What are we playing today? We're going to play uh, Civilization V, one of my favorite games. Yeah, time. you love this game. I want yep. you to show the world why you love it. Show me why you love it. I played some Civ. I did not get into it like you did. I played it more like demos and stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to. I'm just setting some, some things up here. Um, I We're not going to obviously see many of, this, of these types of things, but... We'll figure out who our leader is first. I like to, I want to use Washington, but his, his you get bonuses, and uh, his bonus is not that useful unless you're really going for um, military victory, which which a lot of people do, and, yeah. and that's fine. Uh, what, but that's not really peaceful for me. victory? No, I, I mean, I always end up resorting to the military victory, but I want to try to win it in other ways, and you okay. can win it in other ways. Um, I think we have, keep choose your person and explain why, but I think we have a lot of people who are console players who don't know PC games. What exactly is happening in SIF? So it's, uh, oh God, I don't know who I want to choose. I guess it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you're not going to beat it, um, unless you're really good. So I'm starting the game. It's going to take a minute. So uh, I'm Harun al-Rashid from the Arabian cool. Empire. So I get uh, trade caravans, which are really useful um, and make you a lot of money later in the game. Anyway, uh, Civilization V is a turn-based game that begins at the very beginning of a civilization and, and goes all the way far into the future okay. into when the civilization is mature and future. Era. Okay. So it goes over thousands of years. You can go as long as you want if you want to set it up like that, or you can have like a, a, an end date. Gotcha. I um, mean, there's different ways to score based on how much land you have or how successful your economy is or whatever, and it's basically a micromanagement game. Oh, cool. Um, so we're going to begin our journey, and, and every game of civilization starts like this. Uh, what's wrong? Well, that noise. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to fix my mic. Uh, so you can see here in the, in the right corner it says Sid Meier Civilization. We know. Um, and this is like basically the part of the map you're, you can kind of see. So you can see. You can fog of see. war kind of out the rest of the way. Um, and b basically all of this, yeah, is, is fog. And you have different kind of people, like this is my economic advisor telling me what I probably should do or whatever. I'm going to tell her not to talk to me anymore. No one, <laughs> I know how no to play no lady. To so I'm going to zoom in, and these guys are my settlers, and these are my workers. I only have two groups of people right now. Gotcha. And what I, I want to do is basically make a capital city first. Um, and so it says a, un a unit needs some orders, and you can go here, and then go into the left corner and found a city. And I'm going to found my, my capital city, which is Mecca. Okay. Now Mecca will be here forever, well into the future, unless I just try to destroy it or get sacked or something like sure. that. But this is my capital city. Um, and then I can have my workers, um, who also need uh, some instructions, um, I can tell them what to do, but there's nothing I can really do right now. Okay. Um, because there's two branches of civilization that I think are really important. One is the science branch, and one is kind of like the building branch. Indicated by this this kind of um, this like science science, uh, beaker. science beaker and this by the hammer or whatever. So we click on this. I'm able to now start learning Excuse technology. Mm -hmm. And the technology tree is one of the coolest parts of civilization, in my opinion, Greg, because this is what it looks like. Excuse me. And you learn things in order. So like animal husbandry and pottery, like the very kind of primitive things you can learn. Sure. But if I if I learn animal husbandry, that will open me up to trapping in the wheel, which will then open me up to horseback riding. Which will then open me up to something like chivalry and then banking and economics. Gotcha. And you want to learn all of these things because they help your economy, they help your people. Your people need to be happy. Um, you need to find them goods that they want to trade for. There's a lot of different things to worry about. I always, 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 always start out with animal husbandry. I don't quite know why. It's because you um, love marriage. You love love and marriage. I do. I do love marriage. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to learn that in a few turns. And I can also start building something. So I can build a monument, uh -huh. or I can build a warrior, a scout, a worker, and it'll tell you how much, how many turns it will take. Gotcha. Um, and my economic advisor is telling me, uh, you know, that I can build units as much as, uh, as much as I can. Basically, Mecca has um, one ability to make a unit at a time, whether it's a building or a person gotcha. or a group of people if that makes any sense. Um, now, she's recommending um, that I build a monument first. And if I build a monument, it will add culture to my civilization. And culture will let me do things like eventually found religion or um, make my people happier with like opera houses and all sorts of things like that. So these are things that you have to keep important. It says the monument increases the culture of a city, speeding the growth of the city's territory and the civilization's acquisition of social policies. So doing this seems useless now, but it's actually quite important later. Gotcha. Um, and again, my workers need instructions, but there's not, nothing much I can really do with them yet. Um, and so I can go to them. I can, I can move them around if that, you know, and, and kind of just start searching around and seeing what else ah, is around here if I want. On an ocean or a lake or a river. Um, we'll find out one day. And I'm going to get rid of that, and then we'll go to next turn and see what happens. So you're basically doing this over and over again. Eventually, you found new cities. You have more territories. Before you know it, you're spanning the entire globe, basically. Gotcha. Um, if you want. 
you run into other civilizations. These civilizations can be run by real players in other parts of the world, the real world. Yeah. Or you can play against the computer, which is what I like to do. I was going to say, let me guess, you, do, you, do, you don't play against Yeah, them. no, I don't want to play. But I can, use, I can use these guys right now to kind of just get rid of some of this cloud if I want and just keep going to next turn. Sometimes you can't do anything on a turn, so you just have to keep clicking next turn until it's time. The computer is always, uh, is always trying to uh, figure out not only your moves, but the moves of everyone around you, even if you've not met them yet. Sure. So how does that strike you so far, Greg? I've been talking a lot. It's I'm good. Sure I, I, it's good. I like the idea of Civ. It's 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 a good. It's like I mean, it sounds. This is gonna sound stupid, but it's a good Sid Meier game, right? Of this strategy and this, and it's super deep. And you, it's one of those easy to wrap your head around, difficult to master, right? Mm -hmm. Like learning something, sure, getting in. I mean, how long have you played this one? How long did it take you to get really good at it? I mean, I'm not. I still don't feel like I'm really good at it. I've told people before that I think that the game is so deep and yeah. so kind of predicated on minuscule details that I, I still don't understand all of it, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I think that there are things that happen that I don't quite understand still. But I played this game extensively. I mean, scores and scores of hours. And I don't think I really understood it until I played it for maybe 30 or 40 hours and lost a few times and all that kind of stuff. The game gets really unwieldy. I mean, there's so much shit going on at the end of the game that if you don't have a good computer, it can take a minute for them to, like, even calculate all your moves and stuff wow, like that. The wow. game definitely slows down. Um, so I'm going to continue. Like, I found some ruins here. Um, there's stone here, and once I learn masonry, I can start to actually get the stone and add it to my economy, as mm. long as it's within mm. my realm. But, but over here um, are ancient ruins, and if I go here, I find the ruins, and um, my unit is equipped with the weapons found at the ruins, so now they're stronger. Gotcha. For finding that or whatever. And you don't always find that. Sometimes there's like a, like a, a, a culture bonus or whatever um, for doing that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of trying, so I'm in 380, 40 BC right now. I'm still waiting to learn animal husbandry. We'll get there soon. And I'm still kind of just, I'm way outside of my territory. Now. How do you think, what do you think they're doing? They're just looking at these two pigs together and like, oh man, yeah, how'd it work? How do we make it work? I don't know. They're really far away from home though. As you we want to make more pigs. This is my territory. And as you can see here, like I have um, like some things within here that I can, that, you know, this, I can um, like plant food or um, I can actually mine incense here, but I need, oh. I need cal, I need the skill to make a calendar first. Gotcha. Um, so we're kind of waiting on that, and you can see up here that I'm earning so much science and so much money, five, five gold a turn. My people are pretty happy. They're stoked. Um, this is my progress towards um, a golden age. Um, okay. When a golden age happens, like, you grow faster, you become smarter and all those kinds of things. And this is my culture. Um, and this will give me new policies. Mm -hmm. And I hope we get to that. It's, it might take a little while for us to get there. Um, but policies let you kind of dictate the future formation of your, of your civilization. Interesting. Um, so there's all these little things that you kind of have to worry about. Um, so we're gonna keep. I'm gonna keep moving these guys around because I'm kind of interested to see if I can run into someone else. Um, nothing yet. There's no one around me. Which and this is good news because some people that want to play more combatively will want people right on top of them so they can fight kind of sooner. Sure. But I like having like all this land. Does fighting like, get you benefits? I mean, outside of like more land or whatever. Clean. I can space. If, if I sack a city, it becomes mine. Okay. If like so, I get their economy. I get all of their their buildings, gotcha. all of their people there, their population. It could hurt you though too if you don't have, for instance, if like they. Um, they are proficient in farming, and you take their land, it might actually hurt your own civilization because you're not farming enough land to deal with their city as well. So there's all these like little things that you have to kind of deal with. So I'm going to keep moving through, and I know this isn't too exciting for people out there. We can do a high-level game. I have, I, have a super, I have a super high-level game at home, or um, at home, on my laptop. Sure. We can do another video with that, because I'm like somewhere in like 15 or 1600 or whatever. Oh, wow. And what's funny about that is you reach planes like medieval times of renaissance and stuff but you can reach the renaissance at 1000 if you click up you can reach the renaissance in 2500 mm. if you're bad or you're playing it a different way so yeah, it's yeah. pretty interesting um so we're waiting on um animal husbandry three more turns it looks like we're gonna need for that and i'm gonna keep moving around here and just see if I mean, there's got to be someone around here so you can't be the only person in the universe so as you can see on the bottom of the screen, it says like processing turns for the barbarians, processing the turns for the si other city states. Um, and it says city construction complete. Our capital city has finished building a unit. Cities, so the, the building's done. Yay. Um, and my population has grown to two citizens. And the numbers are small, sure. intentionally. It could be 2,000 maybe, or 20,000, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to build something else. And here it's telling me I can build a worker, a settler, a warrior. I'm going to build a scout. And everyone's recommending that I do this, by the way. My military advisor, my foreign advisor, and my science advisor are all recommending that I build a scout. This will let me more efficiently search areas. These guys can't Think move very further, far. Right, yeah. So I'm going to start bringing them back into the fold, but I'll bring them around this mountain and see if we can run into anyone else. Um, and animal husbandry, I still learn next turn. And so oh, my God. And so, so, so here we go. Um, allows workers to construct pastures on cows and sheep, and we saw the sheep and kind of cows on the map. Also reveals horses, which are used to build powerful mounted units, and you can actually find horses and trade them to other people if you want. Um, so I can learn more science, and now this opens up other things. Now I can go back and learn mining or archery or pottery, but now trapping and the wheel are open to me as well. 
but it's going to take more turns to do these. I typically go down and use the things that take less turns first. Because, for instance, if I learn pottery, I'll be able to learn sailing, which will make me make, let me make boats. Okay. Um, I can learn writing and the calendar. The calendar will let me mine the incense. But if I learn something like the wheel, it'll let me uh, create roads, which is really important. This will let my people move quicker. Um, but where you're going, you won't need roads. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on pottery right now. Um, and these guys need uh, some instructions. And they're kind of in no man's land right now. I'm going to start bringing them back. Uh -oh. And look, I've run into some barbarians. And my guys can easily take these guys. So we'll see what, we'll see what move they do. Um, my military advisor is telling me that uh, units are nearby, but I can see that. Shut up, um, So I'm going to attack, and we'll see what happens. The, the, it says that... Hmm. Do I'm going to lose quite a it. bit. Just do it. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Dun, 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 dun. They're Axemen, and I have Spear, so I'm a little more powerful. But it looks like it's going to be a little bit Pyrrhic for both of us. Um, but I got some experience points, and that's good. Um, and you can see here that I've discovered more ancient runes, so I can find those in a minute. They're right there. We'll see what those do for me. Right. Um, and this is the, so. I, right now, I, I I wonder if I can put them away. Let me see. Um, yeah, this should kill them. It's going to leave my guys like really struggling, but I can recover them later. Um, so this should kill the barbarians. And now they're dead, and I don't have many guys left here, but I found their barbarian, barbarian encampment, so I found 25 gold in Nice! It, and it's now shut down, basically. Um, so the next turn, as I'll show you, I can actually now heal them up if I want to, or fortify them. Mm. Um, I got enough experience where I can um, heal instantly and, or upgrade them. Um, so I'm going to upgrade them, and then I'm going to just fortify them. So they're just, just gonna be, they're just going to be left alone for a while. Yeah. And now my, my scout is done. Um, so I can make a new um, unit if I want. Um, so I will make a warrior just for shits and giggles. Um, As you do. And let's see. Uh, I can garrison them in the city if I want, but I'm not going to do that. So let's see. We'll move them out. And we'll start going in this direction. And we'll find beachfront and some horses and over here and whatnot. So anyway, I mean, so this is the game. I mean, it's the game. And very slowly, you can kind of manipulate the rules so that... You can play it at a quicker clip. You can play a very long game. You can play on massive maps. You can play on archipelagos. You can play on one continent. You can do all sorts of different things um, with the game. But this is the way the early game kind of looks. Gotcha. And so, like, what brings... My thing is, what brings you back to do it again, I guess? If you put 30 hours into a game or 15 hours into a game, like you were saying, and you died, I would be like, well, that was my that my, that was my Civ five. But you're going home to start with a new leader to see a new experience? Yeah, the, the experience, since it's, it's procedurally generated, you're never going to get the same experience twice. You're going to get the same trees and all that kind of stuff, but it's how you deal with it. That's important. I read a lot of high-level Civ 5 play, because I am in no way a high-level Civ 5 yeah. player, about the things they do and how they build their, their units and how they study science or whatever. And I just do things my own way, and I'm not sure if it's right or wrong. It's just kind of the way I do March it. March to be your own drummer um, already. This was the thing I was telling you about. So now I can learn a social policy. I have enough culture now that I can learn a social mm, policy. Okay. And so my options are tradition, and this is best for small empires. Yeah. Uh, liberty, which is best for civilizations which desire rapid expansion, or honor, which improves the effectiveness of one's army. Um, and once you adopt it, then you get all of these, oh, these skills. So dear. if I adopt tradition, then I have an aristocracy, um, legalism, oligarchy, and all those kinds of things. You can choose different things. But if, if I go liberty, I can have collective rule and citizenship. Gotcha. If I get citizenship, then um, my worker rate is improved by 25%, and a worker will automatically appear ne near the capital city so I can get a new worker. Okay. Unit. So there's like all these things you have to think very carefully about. And ultimately, you have to wait until the industrial era to unlock some of these, or the Renaissance, the medieval era. But you can have rationalism. Some of these are not compatible with each other. Yeah. Um, so That's this awesome. is where this is where the game gets like really meaty and like kind of crazy. I'll adopt a liberty. Um, liberty. And once you adopt something, it's it. Um, you're basically locked into those specific That's things. That's awesome. Um, thank you for that information. Well, thank you, Colin, for showing yeah. us the so, game. Yeah, so, I mean, that's Civilization Five, kind of just in a nutshell, very early. I know, Obviously, I know, you're starting I know it doesn't it. look it's too exciting to a lot of people out there, but once you get rid of this fog, once you start running into other civilizations and start bartering with them or attacking them, you find city-states, yeah. and you can ally with them, and everyone can attack one civilization. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, and because I'm using, um, you know, kind of the Arabic Empire um, mantra, this the trade caravans are especially useful. I can send them to other cities, other countries' capitals, and and trade with them and all those all kinds of things. It's a, it's a game of significant micromanagement. What I learned about it is that um, there's just so much more to learn about the game. You've yeah. been playing it for, for a very long time. Goddamn. Um, so that's basically um, that's basically the game. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of Civ Five? Do you play it? How long is your game? What keeps you coming back? Let us know in the comments below. And then, of course, for Let's Play Every Day, come here to Kind of Funny Games at YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. The name's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs>